Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and to today's video. In this one, we're gonna be testing out water-soluble graphite pencils for the first time. I'm going to be swatching them and creating a piece of artwork using them and just see how they perform. I'm really excited because basically they are graphite pencils that when you add water, they kind of look like watercolors and I love using watercolors so I'm very excited to see how these compare. I'm going to be using the Faber-Castell brand of these pencils as I love this brand, I use it a lot so I thought it'd be a great place to start. Also, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare and I'm going to be talking to you guys a lot more about Skillshare in a couple of minutes, but let's get into the video. <laughs> So I start by quite savagely opening up the packaging and this set contains five different pencils and it also comes with the water brush, the paintbrush. And I think you can get this set without the paintbrush but I wanted to get the full set and test the paintbrush as well using all the supplies that I was given in this set. So I won't be using any other paintbrushes, any of my normal paintbrushes, I'll just be using this one here. So it is a size six and it's very small and it felt really, really soft and the pencils we've got are a HB, a 2B, a 4B, 6B and a 8B. So we've got a nice large range of pencils to get those really dark values and I did want to start off by swatching them out to see what sort of range of values we have because some graphite pencils even though they have like 8Bs and 6Bs they're not actually that dark. With these ones I could see a clear difference when I was swatching them down between the different greys you could tell that the HB was the lightest and then it got darker and darker. So I was really happy with the values of these pencils and then I wanted to go in and see what they were like when they were activated with water. So I basically went in and I shaded each pencil from dark to light and then I just got some water on my brush and I went from the lightest side on the right hand side over to the darker area of the swatch and I was really surprised at how much of the pencil marks and the graininess got blended out. I also wanted to see if I pressed really hard and did dark markings with the pencils, how well they would stand out when I blended them out, how much would they dissolve. And you can see, especially with that lighter pencil, that most of the lines really got melted away. But then as I did it with darker pencils, they show up a lot more. I quickly just went in and I did the same thing with all of the other pencils and you can clearly see that they do get quite a lot darker as you go to the 6B and the 8B pencil. And you can also use the color just on the paintbrush just to add some markings as well. And also this technique where you go in with the brush and you just push it to the tip of the pencil to get a bit of paint onto the brush, which I am gonna be using a lot later on. I also wanted to see how well these pencils layer so I waited for those swatches to dry and I just went back in with the pencils and I did some details and I blended them out with the brush just to see how you could layer this up and I was really really pleased with how these are layered you can really add more layers on top quite easily and you can see that you can build up to the darker values as well. Now that I was happy with those tests and I got a feel for the pencils, I wanted to move on to a piece of artwork. But before I go into that, let's talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 different classes in areas like design, business, technology, and lots more. With Skillshare's premium membership, you can get unlimited access to all of the different classes on the site so that you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. There are lots of great watercolor classes on Skillshare as well. So if you wanna improve your watercolor skills even more, then there are a lot of beginner classes on there where you can learn and build confidence with different watercolor techniques. And me personally, I've been really enjoying looking at the courses for investing and the stock market because that's something that I'm interested in. So there's so many different types of classes available to you. 
Skillshare is also really affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, but for the first 500 of you guys that sign up using the link at the top of the description, you will get a two month free trial so that you can check it out, see how you get on, take some of the classes, and then see if you wanna carry on with the subscription. Thank you Skillshare once again for sponsoring today's video. Now moving on to the piece of artwork, I wanted to create a animal study that had a lot of texture and details as well as like a soft background to really see the versatility of these supplies. So I decided to go in and draw a rhino because rhino obviously has a lot of texture to the skin. So all of the materials that I am using, like the sketchbook and the binder clips and the washi tape and everything will be listed in the description if you wanna see what materials I'm using and this set of graphite pencils that I'm using. First, I wanted to go in and create the background. So once I'd had everything sketched out, I went in and I layered down some of the HB pencil and then like the 4B and the 8B just to add a bit of shadows. And the first thing that I noticed straight away was that this was really hard to blend out without getting harsh lines. I mean, it is because my paintbrush is really small and I just wanted to use the one from the set. So this probably wouldn't have been an issue if I'd used a bigger brush, but you can see that where I worked on each area and I couldn't get down to the next area fast enough, it created those harsher edges which I really wanted to get rid of. So I went in and I wet the surface again and you can see that I'm building up shadows by going in and press, pressing the tip of my paintbrush to the actual pencil lead so that I can drop in some shadows and try and blend over any harsh edges to give it that soft look that I want. I'm basically using the wet and wet method for this where I'm just wetting each area and then I'm going in and I'm picking up some of that pigment from the pencil and adding that to the wet surface and that's how you avoid harsh edges. Because the rhino is in the grass, I wanted to create these vertical lines to give the look of blurry grass, give some texture to the background, and especially down the front where it's less, where it's more in focus, I created a lot more little lines to give some taller grass and to give more texture to the background. But really far back, I'm leaving it quite blurry. And one thing that I noticed is that as the paint dries, as this graphite dries, it looks a lot lighter than it does when it's wet. So I then had to go in and get again and build up another layer and build up some more shadows because I thought it was dark enough, but they do dry a bit lighter than they look when they're wet, just like watercolors do really. And I also noticed that these pencils do give off quite a lot of shine, which you can't really see from the side angle, which is why I'm using this a bit more. But you will start to see when I'm working on the Rhino later that there is a lot of shine to these graphite pencils. And that is one of the main reasons that I don't love using normal graphite pencils because of the shine. I find the reflection really annoying. So that's why I avoided using them, but I thought because it's like water soluble graphite, when you added water, it might give more of a matte look, but obviously I was wrong. It still is very shiny even once you add water. So now that I've built up lots of layers on the background, got rid of all of the harsh edges, I start to go in and build up the details on the Rhino. And this is where I can really see how good these pencils are at creating crisp details. Now, I definitely think I approached this in the wrong sort of way. I went in and I basically went in with a dark pencil to block in all of the darkest parts of the, the Rhino and then I was gonna add the water and try and blend it all out. But because there was so much dark pencil down, I kind of got everything a lot darker than I wanted it to be and it was really hard to keep the light areas light and then the darker areas darker. It was just very difficult and I think if I was to use these more, I need to try different techniques because these obviously don't work like normal graphite pencils were or normal watercolors. Another little thing that I noticed is that when you use an eraser, if you want to erase any mistakes, it doesn't erase as well as normal graphite pencils, but it still does erase a little bit. 
So you'll see now that my blending isn't particularly great. It's okay. And I liked the result of this painting, but it's by no means perfect. It's not one of my best paintings that I've ever done. But when you're experimenting with a new medium, there's always going to be lots to learn and you'll, na you'll naturally go in and try things that you usually would with similar mediums, but you may notice that they don't work for this new medium like I found out. So for example here where I'm painting these darker areas, it's hard to keep the lighter areas lighter and not accidentally blend that dark pencil into those lighter areas. And I also noticed that I was getting the lighter areas a bit darker than I wanted, but also the darkest areas, I just felt like I couldn't get them dark enough. No matter how many layers I built up, I don't feel like these pencils are dark enough. Even the 8B, which I was using a lot, it just isn't dark enough. It looks beautiful and dark when it's wet, but as soon as it dries, it goes a lot lighter and very shiny. So I was really disappointed with the contrast that I could get into this piece because I felt like I just couldn't get anything dark enough to make it really pop. So I felt like it just looked a little bit flat but one thing that I did love is the getting in details I found it really easy to go in with multiple layers and build up details like the wrinkles on the rhino's skin I found that really easy to do and I really like doing that with the pencils because they went onto the paper so smoothly and they kept their point really well because I didn't feel like I could keep some of the highlights light enough, I wanted to go in with some white gouache, which I do a lot with my watercolour paintings as well. So I used the Windsor and Newton Designers gouache in the shade Permanent White, and I just wanted to use this just to add a little bit more detail and hi highlight, especially to like the horns of the rhino, and also around some of those wrinkles and some of the grass as well. So I just wanted to go in and basically try and build up a bit more contrast, Try and get in some contrast by adding more highlights because I couldn't go any darker with just the water soluble graphite pencils. So I felt like this really helped the painting pop a bit more and it also added a bit more texture and made it look a little more interesting. I also went in and I used this gouache to add some splatters to the background. You know me, I love using splatters in all of my watercolor work so I thought I had to use it with this as well. And I did go in and create a few little blades of grass. But that was it for this painting. I let it completely dry and then removed the washi tape and I thought it was okay. I mean, it wasn't my favorite piece I've ever done and there's definitely a lot more that I'd need to learn if I was to gonna use this medium again. I didn't really like it if I was honest. The shine and the fact that it couldn't get dark enough was a disappointing thing for me and I think I'll just use watercolors instead, especially if I was gonna do like a black and white painting. I'll just use black watercolor instead of this. Here you can see the final painting and once again I want to say a massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and like I said if you want to get your free two month trial for Skillshare today the link is at the top of the description. Also, if you want to focus on improving your art and becoming the best you can be, then I've got tons of real-time drawing and painting tutorials available over on my Patreon. So I offer these for lots of different mediums, including watercolors, colored pencils, and charcoal. And so for each tutorial, I offer the sketch outline, reference images, as well as the materials list. And every single tutorial on there is in real time with narration so that you can follow along with me as I create the artwork. When you sign up, you'll get instant access to over 300 real-time tutorials. Once again, I'll leave the link in the description. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.